fifth walleye of the evening. This one's probably about 15. Ah. Very nice. What's up, Yens guys? Welcome back to Fishing PA with Ryan Reed. I hope all of you are having an amazing day. I'm super pumped for this next episode because we're gonna start a new series. In this series, what we're really gonna start talking about is we're gonna start breaking down a specific species of fish. We're gonna get into the anatomy and the biology of a specific species of fish. And the reason for that has to do with learning about a specific species learning how they live, how they operate, what they eat. All of that information is going to translate into you guys learning something new about a specific species of fish and translate into catching more of that specific species of fish right here in the state of Pennsylvania. Okay, so the first edition of anatomy slash biology of the fish. We're going to talk about, you guessed it, the walleye. Now, we're not going to talk about the walleye's cousin, Sauger or Sauguy, we're gonna focus on the native species of walleye that live right here in the good old state of Pennsylvania. Now, many of you already know that a walleye is a freshwater fish, and it's typically found in Central North America and up into Canada. Now, closer to home, the walleye is actually native to the Ohio and Allegheny rivers, as well as the Great Lakes watersheds like Lake Erie. Now, walleyes are super popular sport fish not only because they're a good eating fish, but because there are many trophy fish out there, not only here in the state of PA, but throughout the entire country. So what that means is there are a tremendous amount of walleye fishermen. So walleye has a very large stocking effort, especially here in the state of Pennsylvania. Now you guys can find walleye across the entire state in many different bodies of water. However, you guys are gonna find a lot of good walleye action in the Susquehanna River, the Delaware River now, and also in the Allegheny River, as well as the Great Lakes watershed like Lake Erie. Now the walleye is actually a member of the perch family. And really the reason that walleye has its name is due to that pearlescent eye. And you guys have typically seen that pearlescent eye on a photo of a walleye. A lot of times you guys can see that because of the way the light reflects in and out of their eye. Well, their eyes have a special pigment and that pigment really kind of allows them to hunt and see prey in not only dark water at night, but in murky or turbulent water. Thus the reason we call the walleye, the walleye, because of that pearlescent eye that makes them such a great hunter across multiple environments throughout the entire country. Now walleyes have a long roundish body. They have that forked tail and they have those sharp canine teeth at the business end inside their jaws. Now the walleye, it actually varies in color. It really depends on the body of water and the location in the country. However, the color of a walleye can range from a bluish gray to an olive brown to a golden yellow. A lot of times you guys are gonna see that dark on light mottling. And also the side scales may be flecked with gold. Now you're also gonna see some walleyes have irregular spots on the sides that can kind of make this vague barred pattern, almost like a perch. Now the belly is usually light colored or white. Now a walleye can typically grow up to about 31 inches and anywhere up and around 20 pounds. Now the current PA state record was actually caught by Mike Hawley out of the Allegheny Reservoir or Kinzu and I believe that walleye was roughly 17 pounds and nine ounces. So you guys can see that the state record being almost around that 18 pound mark is a fairly large fish, especially for the state of Pennsylvania. Now the world record walleye was actually caught out of Old Hickory Lake in Tennessee. And there's obviously some controversy surrounding this, this particular fish because it was removed as the world record in the early 90s or mid 90s, and then was eventually reinstated as the world record. Now, Mr. Harper, he claims that his walleye, world record walleye, was 41 inches and 25 pounds. Now again, if you guys read some of the forums and you look at the pictures, 
it's somewhat controversial because the picture was taken so long ago and really there hasn't been another fish of that caliber ever caught. So the world record, it currently stands at 41 inches and 25 pounds. That, if that's a true size to that fish, that is an absolute monster walleye. And any one of us that could get anywhere over 20 pounds, that would be a fish of a lifetime. Again, put that into perspective. Take a look at the pictures. You guys decide for yourselves. But regardless, that's where the world record size stands, 41 inches and 25 pounds. All right, guys, I'm going to talk about some interesting information when it comes to the growth rate of the walleye. Now, walleyes can develop very differently depending upon what sex they are, whether they're male or females. The females are typically much larger than the males due to various reasons, one of which the females have eggs when they go to spawn. So they're also eating more as well. So again, females are typically bigger than the males when we're talking about walleyes in general. Now the walleye lifespan is also radically different. Certain factors such as where the fish actually is located physically or where they range is going to affect their overall growth rate. Now some people say that southern walleyes are actually a lot bigger and they grow faster than the northern walleyes. So the main reason that people have the perception that southern walleyes are actually bigger is because it's a true statement. And that's mostly because of the warm water burnout effect. The warm water burnout effect is actually a state in which fish at a more southern latitude grow very quickly, but do not live as long as a more slower growing northern fish. However, due to their longevity, the maximum size of many northern fish populations is not usually much smaller than those in the south. Most walleye fishermen that are catching fish in the south are actually catching younger fish at a much higher growth rate, which kind of morphs into the perception that southern fish are actually larger. Bottom line is really the fish growth rate is gonna depend on what sex the fish is, and it's really gonna depend on where they are physically located. One last thing about the actual growth rate. I have some statistics here. I wanna put these up on the screen. All right, guys, what we have here is a walleye age and growth rate chart. Now these statistics were pulled from multiple DNR reports across different lakes in different locations. On the left hand side, you're going to notice the lake and latitude. Now we have lakes from Ontario, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. On the right hand side, you're going to see the walleye length in inches at various ages. And the age chart is going to go from age 1 to age 10. Now this is important. So looking at the first column, North Caribou Lake in Ontario, at age one, a typical walleye length is gonna be 4.3 inches. At age 10, that walleye is gonna hit 18.0 inches. Now take a lake like Pimatuming Lake here in Pennsylvania. At age one, a walleye is gonna be 7.9 inches. At age 10, we're looking at 29.0 inches. And one more thing to note, Claytor Reservoir in Virginia, at age one, the standard walleye length is gonna be 8.1 inches, and at age eight, we see 32.2 inches. Note here that the walleye in Claytor Reservoir do not have entries for age nine and 10. The reason for that is those fish typically do not live past eight years of age. So this walleye age and growth rate chart actually shows us that warm water burnout effect is a real thing. Southern walleyes actually grow a lot more quickly and they don't live as long. However, northern walleyes will eventually grow to the same size as a southern walleye over an extended period of time. So with that said, it's just kind of interesting to see the studies. You guys should do some additional research. Check out the growth rates because it's kind of important for you guys to understand how quickly the fish grows over time. That way, when you guys catch a fish, you can kind of gauge how old it is, which is kind of neat if you're really into the geeky marine biology stuff like me. Now, another interesting topic is the actual life expectancy of a walleye. Now, the average life expectancy for a male walleye is somewhere between 15 and 20 years. 
The interesting thing is that the female walleyes have a life expectancy up to 25 years. So not only are the females bigger, but they have a tendency to live longer. The other interesting thing here about walleyes, the oldest recorded walleye on record was actually 29 years old. Now that fish was approximately 42 inches long and weighed about 25 pounds. The reason I bring this up, going back to the world record fish, if you guys take and you really look at this and you think about it, if the growth rate is between one and two inches a year for a typical walleye, and the life expectancy being what it is, it is very possible for a fish to grow above 40 inches and over 20, almost to 25 pounds. All right, now what I wanna do guys is I wanna talk about the anatomy of the fish. And we're gonna do this for every episode. We're gonna break it down for every species. Right now, let's jump over and take a look at the anatomy of the walleye. All right, first thing that we're gonna talk about here, we're gonna talk about the dorsal fin. So as you guys can see here, I have the dorsal fin marked. Now the dorsal fin, it's fully responsible for protecting the fish against rolling and assists in sudden turns and stops. Now most fish have at least one dorsal fin, but some have up to three. Now a dorsal fin is separated into two parts on the walleye. The front portion, which typically has anywhere from 12 to 16 spines, and then the rear portion, which has at least one or two shorter spines and the rest of that is typically soft rays. Now let's take a look at the pelvic fin. So locate the pelvic fins here. They usually come in a pair, and that assists with moving up and down through the water, or turning sharply and stopping quickly. Now the tail fin. Everybody knows what a tail fin is. That's actually the main propelling fin that a walleye uses. We also have an anal fin. Now an anal fin helps to maintain stable equilibrium. The anal fin has one or two spines on it. We also have a pectoral fin. We have two pectoral fins, and that's really used for balancing and breaking. So the walleye is gonna use that to balance. We also have the eyes here. I talked a little bit about the eyes previously. That large eye is glassy and it reflects light at night. So the fish's eye, or the walleye's eye, also allows them to see very well in turbid water, which is usually stained or rough or breaking water. And that really gives them an advantage, especially over their prey. So walleye anglers, this is kind of a known uh, nomenclature for you guys, or it's really a known phrase. When you're out there on the water, you're looking for locations for a good walleye chop. Rough water, that's what we're looking for. The reason for that is the walleye has excellent vision and it really allows that fish to hunt in that turbid water. It also helps that fish populate the deeper regions in a lake. They can often be found in deeper water, particularly during the warmest part of the summer and at night. And the reason for that is walleyes love cold water. They love cooler water. They do not like warm water. Now, one other thing I want to talk about here is I want to talk about the lateral line. Now, fish have two lateral lines, and they typically run the length of each side of their bodies from the head to the tail. Now they're clearly visible on most species of fish, including the walleye. Now a fish uses its lateral lines to help it feel movement and pressure waves in the water. And it also helps them to orient themselves to that source of movement. So when you guys talk about fishing lures and water displacement, or a fish swimming in the water, that walleye is gonna use its lateral line to locate that source of movement. So when a walleye is pursuing prey, it really depends heavily on its lateral line, not only to identify, but to locate and catch that prey. And there's been a lot of research out there, guys, that even shows that blind fish can still hunt effectively using that lateral line. Now, another thing the lateral line is also important for is helping a schooling fish stay together. Now, if you guys have ever seen a fish school, you've noticed how those fish always seem to move together and in unison. And that is absolutely a perfect example of how lateral lines are used to stay together. Those fish can actually feel the other fish around them and it helps them respond to that movement. And you guys know that walleyes are a schooling fish 
and they typically use their lateral lines to kind of fill each other out and it helps them when they're schooling to stay close to each other. Okay guys, so really what we did there is we broke down the external anatomy of the fish. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take a few minutes just to kind of talk about the internal organs of the walleye. And we're, again, we're gonna do this throughout this series and we're gonna talk about multiple species. We're gonna focus on several key elements of the fish so you guys can kind of understand how the fish operates internally. That's only gonna help you guys understand how they do what they do and how they live in any body of water. So let's go ahead and jump into that. I have another diagram. Now fish obviously have a brain. They also have a two chambered heart that's really small for their overall size. They have a closed circulatory system. They have a digestive and elimination system. They have liver, kidneys, pancreas, and reproductive organs such as ovaries and testes, much like more advanced animals. <clears throat> now, most fish have an air-filled sac, and that's called the air bladder. We also call that the swim bladder. And what a swim bladder does is it really helps the fish maintain and adjust its position in the water, providing it with neutral buoyancy so that it can suspend itself and not sink in the water. Now, the air bladder also aids in hearing by intensifying sound. Now another important aspect of a fish is its gills. Now the gills, obviously a fish used to breathe. Now the gills are used a lot differently than lungs are would be used for on land animals. Although it's kind of a similar result. The gills take in life-giving oxygen and remove waste gases like carbon dioxide. The gills consist of blood-filled filaments, which kind of look like teeth on a comb. Now these filaments are actually covered with a single layer of cells and have a large network of tiny blood vessels. That's where the gas exchange takes place. Fish take in water by opening the mouth, allowing the water to pass over the gill filaments and out through the opening of the gill flap. Now it's a one-way trip, so that fish doesn't breathe in and out as people do. So again, just a couple really important aspects to a fish anatomy on the internal side. The swim bladder is critically important. Also, you know, the brain and the heart and the lungs and the liver and the kidneys and all the reproductive stuff. All of those organs are critical. And it's worth you guys understanding how a fish operates. You know, why do fish suspend? How can they do that? Well, without really understanding the swim bladder and what it does, you're never going to answer that question. It's important for you guys to kind of take that information and really just understand what you're after understand how a bass or a walleye operates and how you know how their internals are affected by temperature changes or you know weather changes or whatever the case is and what that's going to do is help you guys key in on a specific species during a specific weather or whatever element and it's going to help you guys catch more fish all right guys we spent a few minutes kind of talking about the walleye and we really talked about the anatomy internally and externally. So that was good information. Hopefully you guys found that to be interesting. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about the habitat of the walleye. What do they like? Where do they live? Now walleyes typically live in big lakes, streams, and river systems. They're typically not found in lakes that are smaller than 50 acres. And the reason for that is walleye typically like cooler and deeper water systems. Walleyes like that gravel or that sand and rocky bottom. Walleyes also like turbid water. So streams and river systems is a good natural spot for them. Now walleyes really need cool water. They love cold water. They need it to survive. So you're not gonna find them in lakes that typically the water gets above 85 degrees. They don't tolerate that warm water very well. So they like to go deeper, especially in the summertime, and they find that cool water. And again, walleyes typically like to spawn over rocks or gravel. So they're going to go for that deeper water. They're going to find that gravel in those rock beds to spawn in. In addition to that, they like that 10-foot range. So you're not going to find walleyes in lakes that really don't have that 10-foot depth range because they need to be able to get down there and get to that cold water, especially in the heat of summer when that water gets to about 85 degrees at the top end of the water column. All right, let me just give you guys just a little bit more information on the walleye. 
and we're gonna just talk about kind of the biography of the walleye. Now we know that walleyes travel, feed, and spawn in schools. They are a schooling fish. So in sunny conditions, walleyes are typically gonna go deeper and they're gonna stay within their schools. So the one thing to note is when you catch one walleye, there's typically gonna be more walleyes in that particular area. And the other thing to note is, depending upon the size, those fish really stay in schools of the same size. So if you catch a fish in that 16 to 17 inch range, more than likely the rest of the school is gonna be in that 16 to 17 inch range. If you guys get on a school that's in that 24 to 26 inch range, more than likely you're gonna to continue to catch fish in that 24 to 26 inch range. So when you guys find fish and you catch a walleye, more than likely there's gonna be more fish in that same area because they like to school, especially in summer as the water temperature increases at the surface. Now the walleye is really one of the first fish to spawn in the spring. And sometimes that happens before the ice is even melted. Those walleyes are gonna return year after year. They're gonna come from a far distance and they're gonna look for those same exact areas that they spawned in in previous years. Now again, walleyes are always looking for that rocky or shoal kind of bottom. They really like to spawn over that gravel and that rock. So the walleye, they're really gonna look for those areas in a lake to spawn on. In addition to that, you guys are gonna find walleyes go up a lot of tributaries. So they're gonna go back into the river system and up the river to find those same areas that they've spawned in in the past. And one other thing to note about that, sometimes when you guys get high water scenarios, those walleyes are gonna go up those tributaries or those river systems and they're gonna look for that submerged weed or that grass line. So sometimes they're gonna get into those weeds and that grass and that's where they're gonna spawn as well. Now the females are gonna move into the spawning area first. And that's typically when the water temps are between 45 and 50 degrees. Now after that female lays her eggs and the males come along and do their thing, anywhere between 12 and 18 days later, you guys are gonna get a new baby walleye hatching out of those rocks and out of those grassy areas wherever those eggs were laid and then basically spawned on. Now, a really interesting thing about female walleyes, they can actually produce up to 25,000 eggs per pound of the fish. It's very possible that a female walleye could basically release hundreds of thousands of eggs based on their size and weight. Now, when those baby walleyes are born, most of the time they're gonna focus on eating those kind of small microscopic animals in zooplankton. When those walleyes get to be a few inches, they start eating other fish and smaller fish. A full-size walleye can eat anywhere from other fish like perch, bluegill. They can look at minnows and small suckers. They can eat all types of small fish to large fish, depending upon their size and weight. In addition to that though, walleyes can eat frogs and crayfish and insects, all sorts of things, because most of the time the walleye is gonna be at the top of the food chain in any given body of water. And one last thing, those little baby walleyes that are just born, they go through the, such a brutal survival process. If they can survive for between 40 and 60 days, they're gonna be big enough to start eating other fish and smaller fish, and they really turn into that juvenile stage. When a walleye hits juvenile, the juvenile and the adult walleye start eating similar things. So it's important to kind of understand, you know, how a walleye is born, the, the stages it goes through, where it lives, where its habitat is, where it's most comfortable spawning, and also, you know, what those fish are going to eat when they're juveniles into adults. That'll help you guys start piecing the puzzle together, you know, this upcoming spring, where you guys want to focus your walleye efforts. When you find grassy areas and tributaries, or you find rocky areas, those fish are going to move into those areas when that water temp, again, gets between 43 and 50 degrees. All right, guys, I know this is a long one. Hang in there with me. I'm still super pumped. I'm super excited because we're talking about walleyes. Walleyes get my blood boiling. Love walleye fishing. So what we're going to talk about is some key tips and key elements to fishing for the walleye. Now, one huge tip for you guys when you're out there chasing walleyes. Adult walleyes will typically feed at dusk in the cooler months. And in the summer months, 
your best bet to catch walleye is at night. They ramp up their feeding effort when the water temps cool down. They also ramp up their feeding effort at dusk. A lot of guys go out and catch them at dawn. I personally had more activity at dusk. And a lot of guys will tell you the same because the way that fish is built, they're built to start chasing at dusk and they also eat a lot more, especially when the water temperature is high at night. All right, one of my favorite plans of attack for springtime walleye fishing is you guys do some trolling and do some trolling in shallow water. Find those weed edges and stay on those weed edges. Troll your stick baits. So anything like a thunder stick like that, my favorite is those F11 Rapalas, the fire tiger patterns, probably one of my favorites. You guys troll those stick baits in at three to five feet of water range, especially like spring, like May, April, May into June. Those walleyes are gonna be up shallow. You guys troll them or you cast those stick baits off those weed edges. I promise you, you will come in contact with some of those toothy critters in addition to that. In the summer months, those fish are gonna go deeper. You guys are gonna to wanna to focus on vertical jigging. Take jigs like this, tip them with minnows, leeches, crawlers, or take the approach that I like to do a lot of, and that's bottom bouncing. So you have your bottom bouncing rig, you attach a really awesome worm harness like that. You can put minnows on there, you can put a leech, you can put night crawlers. You attach this guy, this bounces off the bottom, this kicks it up, flutters down. You guys get these things deep, they come in different weights, and you get these into those deeper water areas, especially with deep water structure points, and you will produce fish. I do wanna say this, this is a great time of the year to start thinking about doing some walleye fishing because we're heading into winter months. We're in late December here, January, February. We're gonna get some ice on some of these lakes in the Pennsylvania area. Go out there and do some walleye fishing. Be safe, you know, go out there, look for four inches of ice, that clear ice. Get out there on the ice, drill your holes. <clears throat> look for areas that hold those deep water structures or look for channels or look for you know shallow weed beds that, that kind of drop off. Get yourself into some of these areas and do some vertical jigging. And a lot of times you guys are gonna get out there, you're gonna use some cut bait, um, or you're gonna use some shiners are really, really good, or even like wax or mealworms can be really good in the winter time, and they will produce fish. Vertical jigging in ice is an excellent way to catch walleyes because they're active all through the winter months because why? They love cold water. So I guess what I'm trying to say when you guys are out there ice fishing, use your vertical jigging, use your vertical jigging spoons, use your tip ups, put some live bait out there like minnows or cut bait. And I promise you, you will come in contact with some fish if you guys can find some structure points to drill your holes over top of. You are going to catch walleyes because this is a great time of the year to focus on walleye fishing. So I know I'm talking a lot here. I have a tendency to talk a lot in general. However, the recap is this. Spring and fall, you fish for walleye shallow. Those fish are gonna move in chasing bait fish and they're gonna move into their spawning areas in early spring. You guys are gonna catch a lot of fish in early spring and in the fall if you guys focus on those shallower areas with weed edges and you're gonna use your trolling, your stick baits, casting your stick baits. And in the summer months, doing some vertical jigging or doing some bottom bouncing, you guys can continue to troll these types of worm harnesses or use these bottom bouncers over wind drifts. Find your deep water structure points you find a school, you catch a fish, instantly think about what you're catching. If you're catching a 16 inch walleye, you know you're gonna be in a school with that 16 to 17 inch walleye. You guys hammer a big one, 24 to 28 inches, you know there's more fish in that area. So oftentimes you wanna take a buoy with you, you wanna throw that sucker out, mark that area, and continue to troll or wind drift through those areas, especially in summer where the water is deep. These fish school. They love to be together and they love to be the same age and size. So again, it's important for you guys to understand that because it's going to help you guys catch more fish at certain times of the year. Wow. Wow. My throat hurts. I am, I might have exhausted myself. I feel like I, that was a lot of information. Well, anyway, hopefully you guys like this series. This is gonna give me a chance to kind of rant and rave and talk about a specific species of fish. I love biology. I wish I could have been a biology major and a marine biologist studying a specific species of fish somewhere. However, there's a tremendous amount of information out there that is really just super interesting. You guys can find 
information on any species of fish, learn about them, and that's going to translate into you guys being a better fisherman, and it's going to help you guys catch more fish. So hopefully I was able to give you guys some good information talking about the anatomy and the biology of the walleye. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button for me. If you guys like this content overall, please subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate everyone's time. Thank you guys so much for watching my ridiculous nonsense. For those of you guys that are out there and you're fighting through the cold weather and you're out there on the water and you're getting ready to get out on the ice, tight lines, we'll see you guys next time. What is that, your fifth fish? Yeah, man. Look at that. That's a nice one.